So I've got hand weights because um, they're going to be used to help enhance some of the stretching positions. So welcome. This is my Facebook page. My name is Vivian and this is your short and snappy Pilates. In about 25 minutes, we get a lot of work done. It's basically total body. So I'm not concentrating on any one area, but the whole body instead. Starting with breathing. That's going to be air coming in through your nose and filling into your lungs and diaphragm. Do your best to take in deep breaths. Let's begin. Inhale through the nose and coming in wide at your ribs. So when you're exhaling, you're making a concerted effort to draw your ribs downward. Each time inhaling, inflate. And as you exhale, feel your ribs closing, narrowing, tapering. Again, inhale. And as you exhale, pull your abdominals in. I've got one hand weight here. I'm going to inhale and raise that one weight. As I come over and stretch, oh, pull your abdominals in. Inhale and return. Now, if you've done this before, then you know the benefit of holding on to hand weights. Come up and over, stretch and lengthen. Inhale and return. The supporting hand should be lightly supporting. In other words, don't lock your elbow and become so rigid at your shoulder and neck. Loose. Here's the last one on this side. Inhale. As you exhale, rotate and place your hands down, pushing into the floor. Create lift in your abdominals as you look back behind you. On inhale, untwist. And you can put that weight away. We're on the other side. As you come up and over, feel the benefit immediately as you ooh, feel that stretch. And then inhale. Here we go again. Inhale, coming up and over, stretch. Woo! And return. This feels terrific. <laughs> uh, not, not only do I feel like my arm is going to detach from my torso, but oh yeah, the terrific stretch. Oh, good gracious. All right, so this is the last one. As you come over with that hand weight, rotate your body. Your hands are in the floor. Create lift. Your abdominals pulling up. Shoulder blades open wide. Look back behind you. As you untwist and you recover, bring the hand weight behind you. Hold on to one hand weight with both hands. Pull your arms down and be sure, absolutely sure, that you've pulled your rope. You've rolled your shoulders back. Lean forward and remain tall, wide open at the chest. Now drop the weight and inhale, raising your arms up. Keeping your arms very straight, simply lean forward. Now this is to raise your awareness. It's a back strengthening exercise done with a solid torso, flat back. Inhale, return upright and release. And we're going to enhance that same exercise with one hand weight. Hold on to the ends. Inhale. Now it's meant to be a little bit heavy. It's going to sort of magnify how heavy you are as you're leaning forward. Without moving your body or your spine, lower your arms down and then lift right away. Feel your shoulder and shoulder blades working. One more time. Long straight arms. Avoid swinging your body back and forth. Come backward now, upright, and release. All right, let's move on. Roll down and roll up is next. As you position yourself, be sure that your feet are near the end of the mat and have each of your hand weights on either side. We'll start with a pretty traditional roll down and roll up. And I think before you go grabbing your hand weights, we should do the first one to determine how much assistance you get from the hand weights. Arrive, inhale. As you exhale, rolling up, rolling. <sighs> oh yeah, I'm gonna need the assistance. <laughs> Grab your hand weight <coughs> with your arms long in front. Scoop your abdominals and roll yourself back. Reach long through the arms. Now, if you have not done this before or you haven't done it in a while, it's rather refreshing, isn't it? How much help you can get from, you know, three pounds times two. Use the breathing and be that much more conscientious. As you exhale, deep abdominals and sitting up nice and tall. Here we go again. Exhale. 
Now, this time when you roll up, roll up and lift one leg. Whoosh. Now, it could be bent or straight, doesn't matter much. Come on back, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. Put your foot down, inhale, get ready to roll up, and second leg. Yeah, come on back, especially conscientious of your deep abdominals. Now, close your feet so they're attached. As you exhale, roll up, lifting both legs. This is meant to be relatively challenging. When we do two more, come back slowly. This will start to challenge your stamina. Inhale. Using your exhale, try to rely more and more on your abs and not simply the hand weights. Here's the inhale. As you exhale, now keeping your hand weights, alternate single leg. This is an exercise you're familiar with, but it becomes a little bit more challenging with your hand weights. Your ribs should be on the mat. Your shoulder blades and your head off the mat. Just keeping your arms extended will start to challenge your shoulder muscles. Keeping your head high and keeping your arms long is going to challenge your abdominal muscles. Inhale, exhale. Maintain your steady cadence, that sense of timing, as each leg comes in and goes back out. From here, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Head down. Whew, that was harder than I wanted it to be. So now we'll just go to simple heel taps because it keeps the lower abdominals turned on. Like a, like a light, you know, you turn the light up a little bit, a little brighter, when we just keep legs moving with our head down, low abs are at work. This is alternating single leg. In a moment, I'll close and together both legs will come down. This is an introductory exercise I do almost every class because it immediately triggers the low abs. Such a simple exercise, and when done slowly, it is very effective. Let's add arms. Straighten your arms up toward the ceiling, and straight arms will go backwards slowly. Don't crash your dumbbells on the floor. And if you're carrying bottles of wine, as I suggested, yeah, all the more reason, don't crash your bottles on the floor. <laughs> Here it is. Inhale. And as you. Oof. And so we'll go two more times. Inhale. Ex. And then just one more. We're going to continue in what looks like the same pattern, but this will be slightly nuanced. My arms are not going to remain above my chest. I'm going to send my arms back just slightly. Both of my legs will stay bent, but I'm going to do the exercise called reverse curl. Reverse curl. Literally lifting your rear end up so that just portions of your ribs remain on the floor. My shoulder blades, of course, stay on the floor. Your goal is not to get as high as you can, but instead think slowly control the return. So here's my up, and here's about as slow as I can control. Here is my up and my slow return. Part of the secret is learning where to place the hand weights. I need that little bit of additional weight beyond my head, and then I can slow my return. Here is, and with just one more, I'm ready to put the weights away and doing rollover, literally rolling backwards. You can use your hands and pull your pants up, but also lift your hips. Now gravity pulls the feet down, so let gravity do some work for you. The toes might tap the floor depending on how much you ate for lunch. Slowly rolling down. Now this is done slowly and with control. And then we repeat, but only one more. As you exhale, the second one always feels like my muscles are so much more cooperative. Stretch those legs out. Toes touch the floor. Oh yeah. And then separate your legs, slowly rolling down, slowly rolling down. I'm going to keep my head in the up position 
as both legs go forward and return. Now you recognize this exercise, legs portion. Grab your one hand weight, just one. My arms will wrap around my legs and my dumbbell goes beyond my head, but not the floor. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Continue. You want to feel as if your head were lifting again and not going backwards, but lift again every time. Think. So here's four more. And here's three more. And then two. Yeah, last one. You got it. Head down and put the weights away. Let's continue with double straight legs. Now, if you're not able to straighten both legs, just be aware, it is the name of the exercise. So, aspire, really lengthen and reach out. So, double straight legs move very slowly. All the way up, stop directly above your hips, like 12 o'clock. All the way down, don't touch the floor. You don't score any points um, crashing your legs down on the floor. In fact, that could be detrimental. Don't do that. As you exhale, pull deep in the abdominals. To enhance this exercise, which might be challenging enough for you, stay right where you are, but if you're looking for a challenge and you've done these before, then I've got one hand weight in my hands. As I exhale, the arms and legs are lifting. The addition of my hand weight and arms motion recruits some of my upper abdominals near the rib cage, through the serratus anterior, as you. My low abdominals just continue to be challenged from the double leg lift. Holy mackerel, I'm just doing one more. As you exhale, and then put the weights down. I'm using rolling like a ball to come to seated, rolling like a ball. Imagine that you are the ball when you roll back. One more. And then when you've arrived, you can straighten out those legs. Stay where you are with long legs, and then arms overhead, arms wide open, arms in front, and lower your legs down. You can scoot back a little bit, and we'll do a couple of seated exercises. It's important to sit up straight. I will be using one hand weight. Now, you'll recognize the exercise if you've done it before, and then using the hand weight will enhance, enhance the rotations. So, I've got one hand weight, and both of my arms are fairly straight in front of me. I'll be bending that elbow, like pulling the bow and arrow, and as my elbow and my hand weight go by, I'll pulse three times. Three, two, one. I'm reaching out and transferring the dumbbell to other hand. Go. Stay as tall as possible and move smoothly. Remember, we want the ribs to rotate. Go. So it's not just elbow, elbow, like you're in a crowded subway. Shoulder included. And then one more here. This is. Come to center. Hold on to that one dumbbell like it's a goblet. Excuse me. Lift out and reach out, like you're trying to make a presentation to someone who's very far away, like the table is huge and you want to present and you're leaning forward with a flat back. Then surrender. Place the hand weight on the floor as if it were a giant wine glass standing upright. Continue to melt your spine, sinking your head down, very heavy head, sinking lower and lower. Come backward, drag the hand weight as you drag the hand weight, come back and arrive upright. The second variation is head first, diving your head down, pulling your abdominals in. And as your head dives down through your arms, you can, again, place the hand weight on the floor and continue to sink, 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 deeper and deeper, head down toward the floor. Coming back slowly, each vertebrae, one vertebrae stacking, and your arms will arrive. Now I'm gonna put the hand weight down as I go to the saw. So here's arms open, turn toward me, reach past your foot. Here's three, two, one. Inhale to the other side. 
inhale. Here it is. Don't forget to exhale and try not to bounce. Really reach, 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 and then center. The last exercise is tabletop, which I love to do with my feet flat on the mat. But with hand weights, we can secure them right at the crease of your hips. Now some hand weights are made of plastic and some are covered in a rubberized plastic that gives it a little bit of a grip or stick. So be careful. If you've got some really, really slippery hand weights, you may want to be extra cautious. Plant your hands behind you, inhale. As you exhale, initially you used your arms, but now you're using your hip muscles. Try to present yourself like a very flat table. Shift your weight forward, a little heavy on the feet. Shift your weight backwards, a little heavier on the arms. I'm standing very heavy on my heels when I'm back, so my toes are up and free. Return to your center and give the buttocks a bit of a boost. Inhale. And on your exhale, come on down. I'm gonna remove the hand weight and just come forward, stretching between the shoulder blades. Stretch wide between the shoulder blades. Now, we've got plenty more exercises to do, so let's move on. Face down is next. Once you arrive face down, have your feet wide, about as wide as the mat. Have your feet about as wide as the mat. Pull your pants up, and then be sure each of your hand weights are down by your hips. Plant yourself on your forearms, lift and lower a few times. Feel how the breathing fills your diaphragm and lungs. There are many benefits to using this position, face down on your belly, for breathing exercises. Now we're not doing a breathing exercise per se, we're using the breathing for this spine extension exercise. So take a deep breath in when you lift, and slowly, down slowly, once more, and so we'll stack our hand, hand and forehead, and remember that your feet are open. Be aware of your legs and feet. Keep them heavy and down on the mat. Inhale, shrug. Exhale, unshrug, and repeat. Inhale, shrug. Exhale, unshrug. Seems so simple, and yet it's so important to master. So we're doing it one more time. Let's go, inhale, shrug. Exhale, unshrug. Lift your hands, lift your head, lifting your chest. Now your hands can be basically anywhere but off of the mat, please. Inhale a little higher, lift, and then down with a soft landing. Three more times. Inhale, shrug, shoulders. Exhale, unshrug, lifting, peeling, arriving, keeping your butt clenched tightly. Inhale a little higher, and as you exhale, down with the soft landing. Continue, repeat, inhale, shrug, exhale, unshrug. Have a sense of all of your waistline, your gut muscles, your butt muscles, hamstrings, on. A little higher, and on the exhale, come on down. Last one, inhale, shrug, exhale, unshrug. Arrive at the top of your peak, turn your head one direction, turn your head other direction, Center a little higher, lift, and all the way down. Now you're wondering, why do we have our hand weights all the way down here by our hips? Well, I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to give you the answer right now. Once you rise up, our arms will reach back, and you're going to grab each of your hand weights. When I say bend sideways, your head will come all the way to the edge of the mat. Make sure that you're also reaching down, as if you could hit your ankle with your hand weight. So, start from the beginning, head down, ready, inhale, shrug, exhale, unshrug. Once you've arrived and you're up and your arms are long and you grab your weights and you have to lift these weights, oh my God, bend sideways. My head is all the way at the edge of my mat and I look over and find my foot. Come back to the other side now, stay strong and active, reach. Center a little higher when you lift up and back. Drop the weights and rest your head. 
Take a moment and assess your performance. The timing is slow and yet it's relatively simple. Be sure that you're fully powered. Use the breath, use every muscle available. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> Inhale. On your exhale, arrive at the top of your lift while holding onto the weights. Going sideways, you decide which side, go. Come up and over, use the hand weight like it were a magic sword, boom, and you're gonna touch your foot. Come up a little higher, up, and then you can let it go and sit back. And in child's pose, rest. I um, saw that Star Wars movie like a million years ago, and I forgot what that stick is called. Lightsaber. Is that what it is? Lightsaber. I could have said, <clears throat> pretend you're holding onto the lightsaber <laughs> and reach for your ankles. Oh my God, that was hard. Okay, next exercise, one hand weight behind your knee. So as I fold my mat to get some extra padding there, I'm ready to plant one knee on the floor and the one hand weight that is behind the knee is secured by the calves. Plant your hands on the floor aligning with your shoulders. The leg with the hand weight is going to lift multiple times. As you get started, square off at your shoulders. Now, I've got one knee down and so the corresponding opposite leg, uh, sorry, opposite arm is what's basically keeping me up. In other words, I can raise this arm and the leg at the same time. I'll just pulse, pulse, pulse. From here, four, three, two, I'll put my hand down and bring my knee to the side, like a dog at a hydrant. I'll lift and lower, but only a few times because I've got more moves to do. Here's my leg lifting sideways and now the knee going backward. Circulate your thigh around. Imagine your whole thigh is like a giant flashlight and your kneecap is where the light comes out of the flashlight. Like you're stirring, like a searchlight, your flashlight is going around and around in circles. Figure out reverse. Bring that thigh and knee as far back, as far forward, as far back, as far side as you can. One more. Hold it at the top and just pulse at your peak. Check your abdominals and your balance. Can you float your bottom foot off the floor? Oh, avoid looking around. Four, three, two, remove the hand weight and then sit back briefly. We did only two exercises, well, maybe three, and that's it, but we did it for a long duration. Let's get ready with the other leg. Secure the hand weight, make sure it's secure, and then arrive up on your hands. As the leg begins, it's a small and rapid pulse, pulse, press, press, lift, lift. Soon as you master your alignment, now you're ready to lift your opposing arm. Check your rib cage and abdominals. Don't spill everything out. Lift, lift, lift. And then you can put your hand down. My leg is gonna lift sideways like a dog at a hydrant. Lift a couple of times so that the muscles have some knowledge of where to go. Now I'll start the circle. I'm lifting knee backward, knee down. Sideways lift, aim back and down. The whole thigh bone is stirring around. Oof. Yes. Oof. And I've got my other foot off the floor. Mm. I can reverse this now. <sighs> Giant hip circles, or think of it as leg circles. <sighs> mm. I can do about three more. I wanna maximize the effort as far up and as far sideways and as far front as my leg can come. This will be my last one. And as I finish removing the weight so I can sit back in comfort Open the knees a little wider and sink down. Oof. Breathe. Hmm. That was harder than I wanted it to be. Okay, bridging is next. Now, while I get my mat all straightened out, and I realize my angle is not very good there today, I am ready to use hand weights, which is prepare, preset. Oops. 
one on each side. Rolling like a ball comes before bridging so that your spine is very well rounded. Round, round. Articulating, descend. And articulating, ascend. Rolling back and rolling forward. Twice more. Just one more, rounded back. Testing your balance, testing your alignment. Straighten out those legs, point your feet, and then very slowly, oh, 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 don't lose control. Very slowly, demonstrating control. Now, once your feet are flat on the floor, we're gonna place our hand weights here again at the crease at our hips. Make sure that you've got a pretty good idea of which way the hand weights are secure. Mine is a one, two, three, four, five, six sided. What would that be? Septagon, that's seven. Sixagon, hexagon. Anyway, six sided, and it's sort of sitting very precariously close to my, my naughty parts. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll be okay. Inhale. On your exhale, blow, lift. Now, if you need to hold on, well, then you need to hold on. Your fingertips can gingerly, lightly, just secure the dumbbell so it doesn't come rolling down into your teeth. Now from here, I'm gonna pulse, pulse, the pelvis lift, pelvis lift. I am rearranging this hand weight. What is going on here? Oh, I got a weird nerve in my hip right here. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here we go, and pulse, pulse, pulse. Good time to straighten out your clothing. Here's four more, a little higher, three more, a little higher, two more, one, melt down. One vertebrae, one vertebrae. My toes are light. Now because we did that previous exercise on hands and knees, which targeted the buttocks, my gluteus maximus were very easy to recruit this time. As you exhale, they are so alert, so awake. Here we go, lift, lift. Now here's a couple of common tips, common tendencies you need to know about. Oftentimes, most people lift their hips up just high enough. But there are some people who are pretty flexible and or they're very zealous and they might be lifting their ribs too high. So this is a demonstration of lifting your ribs too high. Avoid that. Keep your ribs tamed, aligned with your torso and spine. On the last one, melt down. One vertebrae, one vertebrae. You have to make a big effort to land your rear end last. I'm gonna keep the hand weights here on my hips but I've drawn my feet a little bit closer together. You know we're getting ready to do some single leg business. Inhale. As you exhale, rolling back, arrive at the top of your very well aligned bridge. Single leg. The whole leg comes down and up. Now if the hand weight is in the way, then just do what you can. Do what you can. The whole straight leg. Don't touch the floor, but do lift as high as you can. Here's the last one. Feet flat, settle, level yourself off. Other leg. Oh, woof. This leg feels so much heavier. <laughs> I know, I know that's not the case. The leg is very straight and I am not applying any force. It's very evenly paced on the way down and evenly paced on the way up. All of my effort is in trying to keep my hips up and don't hold your breath. Last one. Feet on the floor, re-lift your hips, if you did any sinking, and then melting one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. Whew. Let's see, do I have another exercise? I do. I have one more exercise that has long legs and long arms. Come with me. My arms are straight up, and they are straight, directly up from the shoulder. My knees are back, coming back toward my chest, so that my low back and my um, well, my low back and my torso are fairly flat on the mat. Now this exercise is typically done with straight legs, so do the best you can. One leg is coming downward, and so is one arm. If you have to think about it, it's the opposite arm going backward. So here come leg, arm, take inventory. Mm -hmm. Second leg, match with the opposing arm going backward. Moving nice and slowly, gives you plenty of time, gives your brain plenty of time to calculate and then execute. As you all the while, it is just one arm with 
just one leg. There's a hint in there. I will do my one arm with my one leg. And then this time, here's my leg, two arms. Holy mackerel. Super slow and requiring coordination. A little bit more awareness. The trio that is traveling, the two arms, one leg trio, should arrive at the exact same time, at the exact same moment. Which you can see. So use your eyes and your optical input. Judge the speed, the pace, and the exact location. That's all you, your brain. Okay, one more. Inhale. Oof. I'm going to put the weights down. I don't need them, but I need to stretch. Low back is getting some release. Hug your knees back to your chest. Straighten your legs up toward the ceiling. The backs of your knees getting a stretch. Holding on to your long, straight legs. Flex your toes down toward your nose, and then point. Point your toes toward the ceiling. Flex the ankles is what we would say. But the word flex actually is applied in both directions. We flex backwards, that's dorsiflexion. When we point the toes and we flex, that's plantar flexion. I know what I'm talking about. Pull back, dorsiflexion, point forward, plantar flexion. Oh. All right, so we're going to um, bend both knees and press the soles of your feet together, sole to sole or plantar to plantar, and open the knees out wide. Open is external rotation. Oh your femoral head, <laughs> your femur heads have laterally rotated in external rotation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna cross my ankles and my right hand, my right hand is grabbing the left foot, I'm absolutely sure. The oh, left hand is holding onto the oh, right foot and then rock forward and back. Don't be sloppy. I have to concentrate, you should be too. Inhale. Oh, I almost missed. Last one. Now when you arrive, you know, we didn't do the more challenging variation, but when you arrive, untangle your legs, straighten the legs, open, close a few times and don't fall. Close your legs, zip it up, and then point your feet, plantar flexion. Arms overhead, arms open wide, arms in front, and then lower your legs down. And we've got some time to do push-ups. I'm gonna move my hand weights out of the way so there's no chance that I might step on them later since I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I'll do leg number one for five push-ups, leg number two for five push-ups, and then we finish off on both legs, our final five. Plant your hands wherever you can. That's gonna be optimal. One leg. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. And you can switch legs and take your time, recharge your battery when you're ready. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. Then you got five more to finish out. Michael's probably done about 30 already. Okay, oh, I'm just gonna stay on my knees. <laughs> Here's one, give me a break. Two, three, four, five. Oh, five. And then downward dog. Oh, all right. I got to get back on my mat so that my feet don't slide away. I don't know why my socks are like this. Shake out your head. Feel a sense of accomplishment. Yes, yes, yes. You want any more? Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. As you begin to walk back to your feet, arrive on your feet, Maybe you fix your socks and slowly make your way up to standing. This should be done slowly and you'll discover I'm not very tall and my head disappears. Ha! <laughs> this is no way to end a class. I have to come down so that I can see you. Let's do our, that's called reverie, reverence. Sit tall, shoulders down. Turn your head once, turn your head other side, nod your head down. Lifting your face up, up, up. Remember, side to side, 
which I've been calling the Michael Jackson, and then forward and back, forward and back. This motion forward and back is much more important, especially these days, as we spend a lot of time with our head bowed forward. So sit up tall, shoulders back, head forward and back, pretend to be a chicken, and then take a deep breath, inhale. Use the exhale as a sigh of relief, closing the rib cage down, a sense of accomplishment should come over you. So thank you very much for coming to class today. Short and snappy Pilates, we move pretty fast. I have no idea what time it is and I can't see the clock, but I feel like I'm on time. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> okay, thanks for coming. Steve Tomlinson was watching. Jerry, I wrote you a note, did you get it? Thank you very much, everybody. Ciao.